welcome to ACD Combatives, your combatives and control tactics channel. Please like, subscribe, and share. As Coach Kurt. So this video is going to be how can you use modern training methods such as MMA type style methods of training and use that to improve your traditional martial arts training. Um, first we have to examine the big difference between how modern martial arts trains versus your traditional styles. And in this video I'm going to point out some of the things that we do in traditional martial arts uh, I remember doing it when I studied traditional martial arts uh, back in the day. We do these drills, and you absolutely need to drill. Don't think at any point in this video I'm suggesting you don't drill. You drill like crazy. Um, and you even drill in ways that uh, you're like, well, how do I get to this position? I mentioned that in my last video. But uh, you need to train in ideal positions to learn the technique. For example, if you're doing some kind of takedown, well, you need to get to the outside of the body. If it's the type of throw where you'd be throwing somebody from the outside of the body. Um, and so it's good to be in the ideal position to train that and to drill that, especially with new students. But then you need to bridge the gap. How do I get from a realistic position where I'm squared off with somebody and we're fighting and he attacks me with a punch or he reaches out and grabs me? How do I realistically get from that to the outside? Or if it's, again, we're talking about if it's a throw, that would require you to be on the outside of the person, like a Russian two-on-one type position. Or if you're doing a duck under to take the back, you get the idea. Versus like a... Uh, Ipion Sionage or something where you're on the inside uh, of the arms. So let's look at some classic styles of training. See how he stepped through like that? This is classic. I, I remember this when I did Hapkido. People would throw that rear punch in the uh, person. Would say, oh, okay, th the instructor would say, throw a punch, a roundhouse punch at somebody. Well, nobody actually roundhouse punches like that in reality. Um, it's a great way to train the technique because in this he's going to be doing a leg sweep. Uh, or in this case, very similar to uh, uh, Eriminage Aikido style. But this guy's going to throw the punch, slow motion. He blocks. See how he stepped through, the rear leg steps through. It's okay to train that, but know that people don't actually punch that way. So what do you do in reality when somebody actually punches like, or doesn't punch like that? See how the leg is forward? and It's very easy for him to sweep the leg. Um, he, he's not having to force the Kazushi or set up the Kazushi, the off-balancing, to take the leg because the leg is conveniently right there in the front. That's a great way to f train it and to drill it, but then you have to learn how to manipulate somebody. See how I just tried to kick him there on the ankle, make him think I'm going to go one way, and then I go the other way. So I'm setting up the takedown. I'm setting up his Kazushi. I'm setting up how to take his balance. Now that's an example for more of a grappling gi style. Here's more of an example of how you would do it in no gi or if against a strike. See, I would say you can't step past him like that. Uh, you have to, if you're going to take the lead leg, then you have to adjust yourself and go to the other side of the body. But let's say you want the rear leg. I use that at Temi Waza to off balance him. I pull him back and now I take the rear leg because now it's in the front. Here's another example of that. See, you can't just try to go for the rear leg or he'll throw you. You're giving him your balance if you attempt it like that. That's why in traditional martial arts, a lot of times they drill it where the guy throws the roundhouse punch and they step all the way around. But that's not realistic. This is more realistic on how you would do it. So I'm pulling him back after I did the knee strike and then I'm taking the leg. That is a more realistic way of doing it. Here's another example of taking Kazushi or using a technique, a normal roundhouse punch. I do a Temiwaza. I'm off balancing by directing the knee in another direction. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. I'm stopping him with a stop hit, a lead front leg kick. Uh, in some styles, they call it a teep. Uh, there he is. Again, he's stepping through and doing a back end. Now, someone might actually strike you like that with a stick, but it's an example of how do I take the bounce, see how he stepped through? Again, with a stick, someone might actually do that. Uh, but here's stick and knife, a more modern, practical way of training it. After you've done your training, static training, where they step through, let the student know, yes, okay, that's an ideal position. But that's probably not how somebody's actually going to attack you. So how do we get to that point? So now I'm showing you more up-to-date, modern variations of how you would get to the outside. 
Um, see how he's not stepping through. He's doing more of these quick jabs, slices. And I'm not a knife fighting expert, guys. I'm no master of anything. I'm just showing you how I incorporate these concepts against weapons. Um, I probably don't do enough that stuff on my channel. See how he's going crazy with the nice slish, slash, slash, and then I have to time it right. Here's the same concept with a stick. If I don't move, stick comes down on my collarbone, and I'm, I'm in trouble. Here I am. Don't want to back out like that because then you're giving him the full power of his weapon. The stick is hitting at the very tip. It's going to break my arm. That's a bad day. You need to enter. Boom. I did a deep entering throw. Now this is, or an enter. Uh, I'm inside him now. I'm taking the power away from the weapon. I'm also now in a position where I can take his balance. So here I am. I'm going to clinch up. I'm going to, uh, well, maybe not. Uh, there I am I'm saying you can also use this technique if he throws it towards the side of the body. Um, I'm saying again, you want to be inside uh, the, from the guy's hand all the way to his chest. You don't want to be on the outside receiving the power. There I am. I'm clinching up. I'm taking the guy's balance. Uh, I'd be surprised if I didn't do it in some kind of a temi waza. I'm saying you got to be careful not to let him take your back. That's why I'm hanging the arm over the back of his shoulder. There, I just did an arm pass. I did an arm pass. Simple arm pass. Uh, that would be an example of a modern way of training. Here's a traditional, I'm not picking on Kempo, they're just, <laughs> it's easy to show what I'm talking about with Kempo. They do an exaggerated uh, attack, they leave the arm out there for the guy to do his thousand strikes, uh, and uh, I get what they're trying to accomplish. He's saying if you hit somebody like this, they're going to react a certain way. That's a dangerous way to think. Uh, just because you punch somebody doesn't mean they're going to react. Uh, you might kick somebody in the groin and you don't get any reaction out of them. Maybe the, you didn't actually hit the groin. Maybe they've just got a high pain, pain tolerance. Maybe they're on drugs. Um, sometimes you hit somebody in the groin and they go down quick, fast, and in a hurry. You would never count on anything. And so when you have a style that re tells you that you, you're using these strikes to get them to move a certain way, the, s the concept is sound on paper, but doesn't always work that way in real life. And see how they're, it's almost like, this is almost one-step sparring, if you're familiar with it, uh, where they throw a punch and then you do a circle around the person, uh, and they're waiting to take their turn. Uh, there is no perfect answer to a multiple attackers, guys, unless you run away or you use a firearm. <laughs> That's how you take care of multiple attackers. Don't think that you're going to do the movie Chuck Norris thing when you're surrounded by five ninjas like in the Octagon and you're going to take them all out. I love that movie. Love Chuck Norris. Love the Octagon. Great movie. You should watch it. Anyway, this is an example of what I'm talking about. Now he just walks up with the gun. At this point, he's had his, had his butt handed to him. He probably just would have shot the guy from 10 feet away. That's what a smart guy would have done. Um, but this is an example of uh, overly choreographed techniques. And when you see people like this spar, it looks like sloppy kickboxing. So it's obviously not working in the long run when you... Uh, when you train this way. So it's okay to start what I'm saying... What I'm trying to get at, it's okay to start uh, very static and training the technique uh, statically. Here I am doing clinch sparring. It's basically just clinching in the dirty boxing range. We're doing some strikes. There's a knee. He tries to answer the kick. I block it. This is uh, I'm breaking up the different ranges of sparring. We'll, 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 we would spar far range, and then we would spar clinch range, and then we do ground uh, fighting. So here I am. I overcommit. I try to take his back. He does a beautiful shoulder throw on me. I left this in here because I want you to say that one of the reasons people don't like to spar or pressure test is because it can hurt your ego. Uh, he threw me like a, a sack of potatoes. Uh, if I had an ego about that, I would have been upset and I wouldn't want to spar anymore. It's a learning situation. I'm going to learn from that. And things are messy. Here I am trying to do a hip bump takedown. I go down with him. So, oh, crap, I might take his back and try to do a rear naked choke. He's a great grappler himself. So he was able to reverse the position. Now he's in my, I'm in his, he's in my guard. I push him off. I do a technical stand up and then we reset. You can make rules to how you're going to accomplish this. Like, we're going to clinch spar, dirty box. Uh, we'll go down to the ground. 
but uh, the goal is this is more self-defense. So uh, my goal is if we go to the ground, if I can't get in a position like here, I take him down. I try a guillotine. He defends the guillotine really well because he's a great grappler. I lock him up on my full guard. He's trying to punch me. I push him off. I use a t uh, up kick, and then I do a technical get up. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You have to have uh, uh, rules to these things so everybody knows what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, it's not a free-for-all. Here we are just doing some clinch sparring uh, without the strikes. I don't think we're striking on this one. I see an opening. I take the uh, ankle pick. We go to the ground. I'm taking a position. I've established the mount. I'm holding the mount, and then we reset. So it doesn't have to be full-on we're f uh, fighting in all ranges. You can break it up. Here I am doing a blindfold uh, clinch training. I'm basically training with him. I'm putting the blindfold on. The whole concept is that your eyes can deceive you. You want to feel your opponent. Uh, your eyes aren't as important as you think. And we're clinching. I'm trying to take his back. He's uh, doing a good job of defending, but then he let, dropped his head, so I put him in a guillotine. So that's an example of things you can do. Breaking it up, making it more spontaneous, making it more interesting. Check your ego at the door. The most important person on the mat is your training partner, so you're not there to hurt them. Even if you travel to uh, Thailand right now and walk into any Muay Thai gym, you're going to see a lot of soft sparring. They're not going to be beating the crap out of each other. They know that if you do that, you're going to get hurt. So even in a kickboxing gym or in a Muay Thai style gym or Dutch kickboxing, professional fighting, they, they, they don't kill each other when they're sparring. I'm not suggesting you need to do that. I'm saying that you need to do so intelligently. It, just soft doesn't mean uh, something you can't learn from. Uh, but you need to be fluent. You need to work in different ranges. And I break it up. Uh, some days we'll do regular stand-up sparring. Uh, I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu classes. Here's a good example right there of a good hip bump takedown. Um, a clinch range, you break it up. At my jiu-jitsu school, we start on our feet a lot of times, and then we go to the ground. Here we are just doing striking. Uh, this is a fellow uh, law enforcement train, uh, coach that I train with occasionally. She's a Muay Thai and boxing coach, and she's a control tactics instructor with my agency. And we're just doing some pad work. Uh, just because you train a traditional martial art, she's actually got a lot of kung fu background too. You don't really see it in this. You're seeing more of the Muay Thai and uh, boxing influence. Um, and we're not going crazy. We're just, she, she's just drilling. Uh, she's, she's, she's killing me with that teep. She's got a really strong teep. Once, once she kicked me so hard, I peed myself a little bit. But uh, guys, this is how you train. You can keep your traditional martial arts, drill the techniques, especially when you're a new student, you're doing it in a method uh, that's realistic uh, later on. You might see how he threw that jab, but he uh, it wasn't a rear cross that he stepped through with. Uh, I had to learn how to cover and protect myself and make an entry anyway. So here we are doing some of that clinch sparring that I'm talking about, but it's very controlled. The whole concept is just awareness. Uh, we hadn't, I hadn't trained with him very much in clinch range, dirty boxing. So this was this was me showing him, see, we're going to do some clinch. We're going to do some dirty boxing. Um, I'm trying to show him, okay, your goal is to uh, strike me, good knee, uh, or, and or go to my back. I do a, a arm pass, and I'm going for the liver shot. Amazing place to hit people, guys. The liver will shut people down. Don't believe me? Watch some of Boss Rutten's old uh, fights when he was in the prank craze. He did, he, I think he had multiple liver knockouts, you know, technical knockouts from liver strikes. But here we are working the dirty boxing in the clinch range. We're not doing anything crazy. Um, I'm actually, since I'm teaching him, I at some point will uh, even give him positions or open up a position to see if he recognizes it to take it. We're not trying to slam each other to the ground. I see an opportunity. I, I go for the sweep, but I don't go for the full throw. See, I give him my back right there. Like I want to see how he's going to work it if he gets my back. Uh, he wasn't controlling enough, so I stepped away. I said, okay, let's, uh, I, we banged the wall so hard something moved on the other side of the wall. And I was like, okay, uh, I'm on the wall. What are you going to do? Uh, you need to pressure me. So it, we're t I'm teaching him pressure. I'm teaching him uh, uh, positional control on the feet and now positional control on the ground. Um, I hope I'm not rattling on too much too fast. Guys, 
uh, what I'm trying to say is keep your traditional martial arts, especially when you first start training, you need to uh, uh, do those real basic static positions to learn the joint locks, especially the joint locks. But then you need to upgrade to a more realistic uh, way of training and definitely incorporate sparring and so forth. Guys, everybody take care, stay safe, and have a good day. That was awesome. Quit going for my groin! No groin, no Krav Maga! Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Hello, groin! Let's roll! Hey! Let's be careful out. Huh?